This is the third video in my introductory series for Matplotlib. And you can find links to those first two videos in the description, as well as a link to download the notebook I'm going to be using. So in this video, we're going to cover histograms and bar graphs. Histograms allow us to visualize the distribution or shape of a continuous variable, and bar graphs fulfill about the same purpose for discrete or categorical variables. So we're going to be covering histogram basics, changing some of the features, we're going to add a distribution overlay, and then we're going to see how to make both a vertical and horizontal bar graph. So I'm going to jump into a Jupyter Notebook, and the first thing we're going to do is set up our environment. And so I need NumPy. I'm going to get the NumPy random module so I can generate some data to graph, and then, of course, matplotlib. All right, so for the purposes of our histogram, I'm just going to generate 10,000 variates out of the standard normal distribution. Like pretty much any graph in matplotlib, it makes it very easy to just put a graph out there. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be happy with what you get. So let's see what happens when we call hist. So you can see that, yes, we get a histogram, and it sort of tells the story. It looks basically like a normal distribution. All right, a lot of times what we want to do, though, is to sort of get a more granular picture of the data rather than just the 10 bins you get from the default. The other thing we get is sort of a verbose output of how many data points are sitting in each one of these bin edges. All right, so we're going to want to suppress this, especially when we add more bins. And that's pretty much the first thing I'm going to do here is add some bins. Okay, so by default, we get 10. Let's see what 25 looks like. All right, so a much different story than we got. Now we can clearly see that, okay, it pretty much looks like a normal distribution. And then you can play around with this to decide uh, where is the, the sweet spot. All right, if we go too far, we may be getting too granular. All right, and then maybe the 25 isn't quite enough. So let's see what 35 looks like. And, and really some of this is just sort of a matter of personal preference. All right, so I'm going to leave it at 35. Uh, I'm going to make a change to the size of the graph, import the parameters module, and then I'm just going to set the figure size. Okay, so the parameters are stored in a dictionary, so I'm going to reference the key and then set its value. All right, again, this depends on the setting, how big you want your graph to display. I'm going to try 8 by 6. All right, it looks about the same. There it is more spread out. All right, so again, you need to sort of decide how you want your graph to appear. All right, and then we're just going to start playing around uh, with adding some features to the histogram. All right, so we set the bins. Uh, let's set the color. All right, so if you're not happy with the default, uh, I'm going to set it at green here. You can set it at whatever you like. I also like to sort of distinguish one bin from the next, so I'm going to add the edge color. All right, and I'm going to use white. Okay, so let's see what that does. Okay, so there's our graph. All right, and uh, maybe, maybe we need uh, to add some perspective here by adding the grid lines. All right, so the default is to just set it at true, and you're going to get X and Y if you do that. All right, that may be too much for a histogram. Probably enough to just show them along the Y axis. Okay, and there they are. It does help, but somehow it seems to take away from the data because it looks like it's sort of laying on top of it. All right, so we want to add some perspective to our graph, but not take away from the data that we're graphing. All right, so I'm going to sort of mute the lines. We could set the color. All right, so we can set a color here. All right, I'm going to use the alpha parameter because I think it's a little bit easier. All right, so alpha is going to make the grid lines somewhat transparent. All right, so it takes a value between 0 and 1. The closer to 0 we get, the more transparent. So let's see what that that looks like. And yes, well now we can see the grid lines, but again, the data is in the forefront here. All right, we can also use alpha to set the transparency of the data. Let's mute it just a little bit. All right, and you can decide what you like and whether or not you like it. All right, alpha is really useful if I am going to plot two variables on the same histogram, so two distributions. So let's see how that looks. I'll set a y, and we'll set it just a little bit different than the x. Uh, we'll use the numpy random module, and instead of 0 and 1, we'll set it at 1, so mean of 1, standard deviation of 1, 10,000 of those. Okay, it's going to be pretty much the same as this line of code, so I'll just copy and paste it, and then uh, instead of X, it'll be Y, and then uh, we'll make it a different color, so let's see how orange looks. Okay, so you can see that it's pretty much the same shape, but it's uh, shifted to the right here a little bit. And by using the transparency, all right, if I set alpha at 1 here, all right, we can't see the green data behind. All right, so alpha can be very helpful. All right, so now we get the shadow of the underlying green distribution. I'm going to show you how to graph 
an overlay, and we're going to overlay the theoretical normal distribution over just those x variates. All right, so a lot of times when you graph data, it's not going to be coming from the NumPy standard normal distribution. It's going to be coming from some other distribution, and you want to be able to test whether or not maybe it fits the normal. All right, without getting too heavy into that, we can just visually overlay a theoretical graph of the normal distribution and see how closely our data fits that. All right, so we're going to start with our histogram pretty much the same uh, as it was before. Okay, I'll plug in some bins here and we'll use 25. When we originally plotted the data, we're getting counts of how many observations fit into each bin. So we can see that, okay, right here in the middle of the green, uh, the most points are falling in somewhere around zero and it's way over 800. Now to fit this to the theoretical standard normal, we're going to have to get relative frequencies or normalize the data. So to do that in Matplotlib, it used to be able to use the keyword normed and then somehow they decided to change it to density and it's true. So we're going to start here. Okay, so the only difference we're seeing here is that instead of the counts here, we're getting the relative frequencies. Okay, so we're going to need to add a couple lines of code to get our overlay. And the first thing we're going to need to do is, as I've already done here, import the normal module from SciPy Stats. That should be already installed if you're using Anaconda. And uh, to get the overlay, I'm just going to make some points, and I'm going to use the NumPy line space, and I'm going to reference our x variable, and I'm going to start at the min, and I'm going to go up to the max. Okay, and then I'm just going to tell it how many points in between I want it to place in this NumPy array. All right, so I'm just sort of arbitrarily deciding that 100 is good. Next, I'm going to get the mean and standard deviation out of x. All right, so there are other ways to do this, but I'm going to choose to use the norm.fit and then we'll fit x. So it returns the mean and standard deviation. Next, we're going to set a PDF, probability density function variable, and I'm going to use norm.pdf. I'm going to pass in that overlay array and then the mean and standard deviation that we just fit. Okay, so with that done, we're ready to go ahead and plot our overlay. And it's just a line plot. Okay, so I will make it red and suppress the bin locations. And let's see how that looks. Okay, so there's our overlay. Okay, so we can see that, yes, the data that I pulled from the standard normal seems to pretty closely follow the theoretical normal distribution. All right, sometimes you'll see bars that exceed our overlay, and that would indicate that they're overrepresented, uh, or you'd see big white areas in here where they were underrepresented. Okay, the only other thing you might want to do is to set the x limits here so we can center our graph. So probably uh, minus and plus four is good. Okay, so there's our histogram with an overlay. One more thing I want to show you uh, with histograms, and again, you can use most of the things I'm showing you with other graphs. Here we're going to add a call out to our histogram with uh, the overlay. And so I'm going to add a call out of the mean and standard deviation. All right, so we're going to start pretty much the same way we did above. What I'm going to add is text. All right, so for the text, what we have to do is tell it the x and y that we want it to plot at. So maybe minus 3, somewhere between uh, 0.4 and 0.35. Okay, so we'll try through seven, and then uh, we just tell it what we want to plot there. Okay, let's see how that looks. Okay, so there it is, our call out. All right, I'm going to add uh, a little bit more to it though. All right, obviously we want to suppress the text that's getting printed there. All right, so uh, if we're saying that's the mean and standard deviation, we should probably show them. Okay, and here I'm just going to use the format function and pass in the mean and standard deviation that we fit. Take a look at that. Okay, so there they are, all right, probably a lot more precision than we need. Uh, and also note that, well, the standard normal has a mean of zero, standard deviation of one, and we can see that when I just draw 10,000 randomly from that distribution, I don't get exactly zero and one, but pretty close. All right, probably two or three decimals of precision is good enough. All right, and then I'm going to actually uh, replace mean and standard here with the symbols mu and sigma. So even though I am using a sample, I just want you to see that, oh, matplotlib allows you to use LaTeX if you want. So I will replace this. And to use LaTeX, I start with a dollar sign, and then I'm going to say mu, end it, and then do something similar for sigma. Okay, so as we expected, we get two decimals of the precision, and now we have the symbols mu and sigma instead of the words. Okay, I'm going to set a couple parameters. So I have to pass in a dictionary, and it's going to be edge color. I'll just set it at gray, see what that looks like. And then the face color. 
Okay, so there's our histogram with overlay and a callout. Okay, so that should get you started with histograms. I'm gonna move on and uh, take a look at bar graphs quickly. All right, so the data for the bar graph I'm gonna use, I've made a dictionary here. I went ahead and looked at the census data and I got the percentages uh, for each of the age groups. All right, so this is how uh, the Census Bureau uh, categorizes people in the US. And if we go ahead and sum that up, We'll see that, okay, there is some rounding going on there uh, as it doesn't add to 100, but it'll be good enough for our purposes. All right, I also want you to see that, okay, I can put a container of a graph out there without any data in it at all, if you have a use for that. All right, so here I've gone ahead and set a title, uh, I've changed the font size, and then I added those grid lines. Okay, so we're ready to do our bar plot. So it's just bar. All right, it's a little different than you might expect. We need to tell it what to graph along the x-axis and then how high to make each bar. That's the minimum we have to do. So I'm going to use our age groups variable and I'm going to use the keys on the x-axis and then for the height I'm going to use the values. Okay, so there is the data from that dictionary represented as a bar plot. All right, I'm not super happy with those grid lines, so I'm going to set my alpha a little lower. All right, and then a lot of times what people like to do is plot the value on the bar. So it's not enough to just see the bar heights, uh, we want to see the value. Right, so once again, I'm going to use that text feature. Okay, so, but what are we going to plot? All right, so we want to go through each one of those keys and on the bar place the value. All right, so since I want to do the same thing, more than once, it makes sense to use a loop here. So I'm going to use a for loop and I'm going to unpack each one of those keys and values. I'm going to get it from age groups and the items. And then I'm just going to plot the key and the value. All right, so that's the X and Y. And then what do I want to plot there? What's the text? It has to be a string and it'll be a string of the value. So I'll put the semicolon and then uh, let's see what this does. Okay, so we're sort of getting there. Uh, it's not great, all right, but we can see those values plotted at each bar, all right? We'll make a couple of changes here. So I'm gonna move the, the value down, all right, along the y-axis. So we'll do value minus two, see where that gets us. Uh, we'll make the font size a little bit bigger. Uh, we'll change the color to white. Okay, try that. All right, a little bit better. All right, I'm going to uh, make a couple other changes. Uh, we want the data to be centered in on the bar, not sort of out at the right edge like it is. Move some of this down. Um, let's make it bold. And then to center it, we'll use horizontal align. As advertised, we now have our bar chart and we have the values plotted on each bar as well as the actual values being plotted. Okay, the last thing I want to do is sort of transform this into a horizontal bar plot. And there's just a couple of little changes we need to make. So I have most of the data here already. Uh, one thing we have to change is somehow when I specify a horizontal bar plot, it won't unpack those values and keys from the dictionary. So I have to first recast them as lists. Okay, so simple enough. Uh, the other thing that's a little different is that, okay, we're turning the data 90 degrees to the left, and so now the x-axis is actually the values. So if we're specifying where the text goes, we have to first place the value and then the key. Okay, the rest will be about the same. Let's see how this looks. Okay, so um, once again, we cannot actually see it. If you look really closely here, uh, there is some of the data getting plotted there. It's white, so it's hard to see. All right, so what I'm gonna do is move it in, try value minus two. Okay, so there it is, all right, not quite all there yet, so let's try value minus four. All right, so pretty good. All right, and then the only other change I made here was other than horizontal alignment, we used vertical alignment. Okay, so I hope that helps you get started with bar graphs and histograms.